Hi everybody, welcome to Motion Church. We are so glad you are here with us today. Now here's your lineup of announcements for this week. Our Motion Kids Advent, Unwrapping the Greatest Gift, is on Facebook, Instagram, and the app. Come join us there. Also for Motion Kids, on December 23rd, you'll be receiving a special delivery. It's a manger scene to build with your families. Be sure and take lots of pictures and share with us on social media. This Christmas, we are engaging in a community event called Christmas Cards for Seniors. We are blessing and donating 850 cards to 850 seniors living in long-term care homes in Kamloops. We would love for you to participate and be a part of this event. You can donate your cards here at the church or you can visit the app for more information. Special thanks to Carrie Jones for organizing and initiating this event. Join us online for our Christmas Eve candle light. The service will be at 4 and 5.30 on December 24th. It will be a beautiful time to focus on the Lord and the birth of Jesus Christ. Motion Youth Culture, be sure to communicate with your small group leaders as we are still meeting weekly. We are meeting digitally and we would love to see you there. Be sure to keep your eyes open if restrictions change. Information and links to all of today's announcements can be found at our website, wearemotionchurch.ca or on our app. Thanks, guys. Welcome to Wednesday Night Church. Hey, uh, Motion Church family. It's always good to be together, and we're delighted to have Pastor Andrew sharing the word tonight. Uh, let me just make you aware of a couple things. First of all, uh, most of you uh, by now know about the new public health order that Dr. Bonnie Henry released this week. And uh, so in response to that, we have put together a plan for a Christmas Eve service, and she's allowed us to have drive-in services and so we're gonna be doing some drive-in services for Christmas Eve. So uh, stay tuned for the details on that, but we're really excited that we're able to do that. And it's gonna be a very, very special moment together uh, for us and for anybody else who would like to come. Uh, but of course there's limitations in that. So anyway, stay tuned for details regarding that. Um, this is the time when we bring our tithes and our offerings to the Lord here at Motion Church. So uh, we don't do that obviously physically anymore. Uh, but thank you for those of you that give and have been faithfully giving electronically. We're going to believe God that we're going to end the year in the black. And uh, yeah, it's going to cost us a little extra to do this Christmas Eve stuff too. But, you know, God is going to help us. And I believe we're going to come through this year, not only just making it through, but actually prepared for what God has for us in 2021. So let's believe God together for that. Thank you again for your faithful giving. Um, let me just say before Pastor Andrew comes uh, that in these days there are a thousand distractions around us and you could get uh, really consumed with some of the things that are going on in the media and some of the things that circulate on Facebook and, and let me challenge you right now to focus on what God is doing. Where is God's heart in the middle of all this? And God's heart is for people. And so let me challenge you to align yourself with God's heart, with what God is doing. Jesus said, I'm only doing what the Father is doing. Can I challenge you? Make that kind of a commitment. What is God doing? Let me be a part of that. And so don't get distracted. I know there's all kinds of stuff about masks and vaccines and everything. Don't get caught up in all those things. Focus on what God is doing and then be a part of it. And let's see his kingdom come, his will be done here in Kamloops and in our nation as it is in heaven. So again, that's my pastor's heart for you. Thank you so much for being together with us tonight. And uh, we're going to welcome Pastor Andrew to come and bring the word. Can I just ask you to do something for me? As he comes, would you, would you type something in the chat for him? Put a little fire emoji or the praying hands emoji or the praise hands emoji or something. Just to let him know that you're here online and that you're with them. And type a little amen every once in a while and and he'll know that you're with us. So come on, let's welcome Pastor Andrew as he comes to bring the word tonight. Thank you, Pastor Johnny. Great days are here. God has never changed his mind. And now let me tell you in advance, COVID will not change God's mind, nor his plans, nor his momentum. He pre-thought all of this and got, it, got himself all ready for it. 
Now we're going to get ready for it too. So welcome all online around different parts of the world. Greetings to you and it's very fitting to say peace to you. The world is inundated with fear. Fear, fear, uh, legitimate fear and a lot of illegitimate fear. And so let the peace of God cover both of those aspects. Anyway, this is the season where the heavenly host said peace on earth and God meant it and uh, you're not going to find peace from the earth but you can find it in the earth from the Lord all right I want to talk about it's over before it's over I'll have to probably go into two sessions I would um, try hard right now to be more conversational than yelling and preaching. Uh, just coming into your home, I was raised that way, and I know what it is to have somebody just talk to you. Uh, in our day, it was on radio, and instead of just preach over our heads. So we're going to talk about speaking of those things that are not as though they were, um, that's why I'm able to say it's over before it's over. Um, before anything ever happened, the word of the Lord came forth, and then whatever needed to happen happened after that. It didn't happen, and then God described it with his word. God describes it prophetically, and then it becomes a reality. I would like to share a few thoughts that rotate in all of our minds concerning the inability right now to gather as a congregation. And uh, I want you just to think and get some perspective on it. And so I'll share a few nuggets with you. Uh, I've decided not to hurry. Um, like someone said, I read this crazy thing that one was writing a letter to their friend and said, I'm writing very slowly because I know you can't read real fast. Well, that's not your case. You are very sharp and quick, but the speaker is slow. So I'm going to go through this slowly so I don't miss what I need to say. Concerning gathering, here are some nuggets, and I'm a nugget person, especially if it's gold, I really like it. Though we are not gathered, we remain assembled. Though we are not gathered, we remain assembled. I could preach on that, but I'm going to move on. We have gone from local to global concerning the Word of God. Let's not get fogged up with COVID. Let's see what God's doing in the midst of COVID. From the smallest churches to the biggest churches, we are able, with our cell phones, to go around the world. That ought to be praised. God needs to be praised for that. There's more word uh, shared right now around the world, networking the entire world. And you might say, well, I don't see massive results. I'm a farm boy. When you put the seed in the ground, you see no immediate results. But the farmer knows, the seed knows what to do. The word is going out. And the word is wrapping this whole world around. Like I said, from the smallest churches to the biggest churches, that word will do its job. And you will, we will see a harvest that we have never seen before. This is to encourage you. Whether I get in my message or not, I'm not in a hurry. I want to come into your home and encourage your hearts, and I want you to, I want to shift some of your perspectives, not everybody, but some of your perspectives are so on the things that are happening around us, and it's blurring your vision to the things that God is doing, and I want to change that. Praise is ascending from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same through the entire region, not only in church as much as we love it. Last Sunday's praise and worship here, 
We're watching it online. And I thank God for my wife because otherwise my ballpoint pen can't help me. And that's the thing that I still use. But we're watching the worship and praise in this as they were leading us online in praise and worship. And we had a Kleenex box and both of us were pulling out Kleenexes and just wiping our tears. There was such an anointing, such a power of God. You know, Satan will pay for this one if he has anything to do with this. Because worship is permeating everywhere. From the house of God, through the house of God, through every believer, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Let me encourage you to praise God in your individual lives, in your family. Worship. Who can stop you from doing that? They cannot. So if the fire was in this place, now the fire is burning all over the city and all over the world. We have yet to see the results of it. Worship is not only an expression in music and song. Worship is submission and yielding to the Lordship of Jesus Christ in our life. So you, 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 you are a worshiper. Worshippers worship. So you can't cut off worship from a worshiper. You can only cut off what might be considered worship from someone who's not a worshiper. So they just kind of do it for the religious reason. I am a worshiper. I make every effort and attempt to submit to the Lordship of Christ. Knowing me, that's why God's mercy is so great in my life. And that's why I need the grace of God. But at least I want to go in the right direction. So worship God in your life and the things you do. Nobody's stopping anybody from that. Someone said to me, well, people are really missing church. Yes, they are. Thank God they're missing church. But I've pastored a church for years. And under my wonderful ministry, people sat in church and backslid. Failed. Some sat there and were depressed and had to go on medication. Look, you and God is the key. Get connected with God. And, and all the rest is going to start fitting in marvelously. Don't use the excuse that I can't come to a congregation. Therefore, you know, all the aspects of my life are lower. I'm intensifying every aspect of my life so that we're ready to minister to people who need peace, who need help, who need prayer. So we don't only intellectually pray for them, but that we're ready in God to impart to them. Jesus didn't say, have peace. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. And that's where we ought to be, to be able to tangibly, spiritually, be in a position where we don't only tell people, uh, be happy, but we can impart some joy. We Be peaceful. No, we can impart some peace to them. Okay, our gadgets have taken us to a greater sphere of healthy communication than ever before. Now, I do have a problem there, but I told you earlier, I depend on my wife. There is no way we could communicate with as many people as we are right now without these gadgets. We're communicating with Thailand. We're communicating with Africa. We're communicating with Guatemala. We're communicating around the world. As, as late as of this morning, we talked to somebody in China who is treating us like a mom and dad. And they just reached out and and, and wanted to hear a word of encouragement. We couldn't do that without these gadgets. So just because I can't come to a church service doesn't mean I can't communicate. I have a question for you. Have you at least, at least, called two people a week to see how they're doing? If all of us did that, we would so network the house of God that even though we're not gathered, we're assembled. We're assembled. Sow when it's dry, grow when it rains. 
and you will harvest when it shines. It's too late to harvest when the sun shines if you haven't sowed. We all know the story that Isaac sowed in famine and had a hundredfold harvest. You know, again, being a farm boy, you don't sow your crop when it's raining. You can't. It has to be dry. Don't be put off with things that maybe are dry in your life. I want to address that. I have people uh, phone in and say, I don't know what's happened to me, uh, Pastor Andrew, but I feel so high and dry. I, I just don't feel anything. Well, let me tell you, when a farm boy gets out there in the field and it's high and dry and hot and blowing, he doesn't quit sowing the field. If, if you feel that way, let me encourage you. Put seed in the ground. Give like you've never given before. Not only finances, but in other ways. And then God will send the rain. You know, in Malachi, and all the preachers got that memorized, the Bible says that if you tithe and you give offerings, he will open the windows of heaven upon you and send you a blessing. Do you know what that blessing is? Let the Bible interpret itself. The windows of heaven means rain. I will rain upon you. So when you tithe and you give offerings, that's like putting seed in the ground. And then God says, I'm going to rain upon that seed, and then you'll have a harvest. Uh, if you don't put any seed in the ground, God will still rain, but all you'll have is mud. You're not going to have a harvest. You'll get wet, but you're not going to have a harvest. Whatever you do, you want a harvest of fellowship? Fellowship. You want a harvest of love? Love. You know, we didn't sow oats hoping to harvest wheat. That would be pretty dumb. So what is it that you need? Sow into your need. Well, I'm just believing God. It's like a farm boy would say, I'm just believing God for a harvest, you know. Praise God, my faith's going to work. It won't. Sorry. You're just going to have a black field. Sow into your need. Sow what you want to harvest. You want to harvest peace? Be a peacemaker. Amen. You want to harvest faith? Talk faith. A lot of people are talking defeat now. You know, even a lot of, sorry you say, pastors' messages, their text is, would you please turn to COVID-19? <laughs> Leave COVID-19 where it's at. Get into God. Don't fight the darkness. Turn the light on. Amen. Turn the light on. And as believers, the world out there is starving for hope and starving for faith and starving for encouragement. You are it. If you're not it, who is? I've checked around. Nobody else. You're it. All right, I, I told you I wasn't going to preach on these nuggets, but oh, Lord. The power of the corporate prayer is determined by the sum total of each participant. It's wonderful to pray together. But if you don't have a prayer life individually, you may be encouraged in corporate prayer. You may learn how to pray. You may do all of that. But don't depend on corporate prayer only. If you check your Bible right from Genesis and on to the book of Revelation, the greatest experience with God that people ever had was never in a corporate setting. Amen. The corporate setting 
was to teach you how to have that experience with God. But you can't really fully have that experience in a corporate setting. So, you know, Moses in the cliff of the rock, John the rebel later on the Isle of Patmos, and just a whole bunch of all these people were found alone. Jesus himself went up in the mountain by himself alone to talk to the Father. He talks about going into the closet. It actually doesn't mean a little cubicle, but if that's what you want to use, that's fine. Most of those cubicles aren't my size. It's, it's a private place with the Lord where you can have a unique and intimate relationship with him. God will not give you an intimate relationship in public. That's what the world has done with our degenerated morals. God will not. God wants to meet with you and him alone so that he can engineer his relationship especially for you, not for the whole crowd. There are dynamic things that God does in a corporate setting. Dynamic things. You know, there's, there's the multiplication factor. There's the, there's the addition. Every gift counts and every measure comes together and the measure is greater. But unless you have an individual personal walk with God, how are you going to handle Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and all the way through the week? How are you going to handle that? You have to be able to stand on your own two feet. Amen. So let me read this again. The power of the corporate prayer or the corporate worship or the corporate praise, listen carefully, is determined by the sum total of each participant. So when we come together and we've been in prayer, we haven't been fighting all week, We've been in prayer. We haven't been kicking the dogs around Sunday morning, but we've, we've arranged everything in our life that when we come together to worship God corporately, then we can blow the tiles off the ceiling. The last nugget before I attempt to minister what I wanted to is don't wait for the needs to come to the gathering Go out and find them and gather them in. Again, I, you know, you might say you're always relating to agricultural lessons. Well, read your Bible. It was many, many parables were agricultural. A farmer doesn't wait for the wheat to walk into his granary. He has to go out there into the field and gather what's mature. There's an aspect of harvest that we slightly missed because we're always talking about, and, th and that's totally right, it's not wrong, and I'm not criticizing it, but we talk about harvest as bringing in those that don't know Jesus Christ and, and, and reaching them for Christ. But did you know that you don't bring immature harvest into your granary? Harvest matures in the field. And God really stirred my heart about this. What has God done in many people's lives that to whatever degree has matured them, that they're ready to come into the house of God and function in the kingdom of God? So it's not only unsaved that are there. There's other people that God's been working on. And if you're one of them that you're listening in, and maybe you haven't been part of a church and body. It's not necessarily to keep you Christian. It's to keep others Christian. It's for function. You know, a member of the body can exist by our medical science nowadays. Certain members can exist for a while at least outside of being connected to the body. But they're not functional. Every member has to be connected to the body to be functional. It's not a matter of just existence. Well, I'm doing okay. 
you know, I pray on my own and I'm okay and I'll make the rapture. Thank God for that. I'd hate to see if you didn't. I'm not going to be around to comfort you because I'm gone. But you must be part of a functioning. Pastor Johnny always says, don't do Christianity alone. We, we are members, plural, of the body of Christ. And I want to emphasize this strongly because I want to minister in the days to come on covenant and I've talked to Pastor Johnny about it. I also see a tremendous need to um, minister and have a revelation of what is the body of Christ. It's not a group just gathering. It's an assembled. Hebrews 10, 25 says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, not only the gathering. This first a gathering then there's the assembling. It's like building a house. There's first a gathering of all the materials, and there, there's the assembling of those materials. So I always say only mice live in the lumberyard. People live in houses that are assembled. So God wants a habitation. God wants somewhere to work from, and we will talk about that in the future. Now I'm going to start this off, and I'm um, attempting to watch my time. They got so many numbers up there. I don't know which one to watch. I want to draw a parallel between Zechariah chapter 1 and our present situation in the world. I would uh, encourage you to read Zechariah chapter 1 and then from there read beyond chapter 1. Uh, there's no one that's more clear other than Isaiah also to talk about the coming Messiah, the coming of Jesus the first time. So this has been, this Zechariah chapter 1 has been marinating in my spirit for at least three months. I brought it to Wednesday night church every time I came to preach, and the Lord kind of didn't give me a green light on it. So I preached other things, and then the last week, it seems like the Lord's giving me a green light to go in this direction, so I'll definitely not be able to finish it today. I'll pray for a couple more sessions. Uh, this Zechariah chapter 1 can be applied not only locally, because we're not just local now, it's amazing even to say these words. We're actually global, and many are global. And what God is doing today in the kingdom is global. You notice that we've never, according to my understanding, had such a global pandemic in every nation as we have now. So the enemy always tries to mimic God before God does his thing. That's why scripture says uh, it's a divine principle, first the natural, then the spiritual. So if you want to be prophetic, see what Satan is mimicking around. You don't have to do that. You can hear from the Holy Spirit. But that is also an affirmation that what is happening right now is global. And what God is doing is global. This coming uh, move of God, which, you know, we're not trying to identify it because God has always surprised us with his movements. But the coming move of God is not going to be localized to one city or one territory or one area. Right now, God is setting up his house and his kingdom that when he decides to move in a certain way, I prophesy to you, it's going to be absolutely global. And it's not going to be like, well, we're the stars here because God's moving here. No, God's going to move everywhere, all around the world, places that aren't even connected to other ministries, but are connected to the Holy Spirit. That's more important. All right. 
So global is, is the vision that's coming up, and I'm just setting it up for Zechariah chapter 1. It also has wonderful and powerful applications for the individual life. Yes, this is global. Yes, this is national. Yes, this can be provi uh, provincial, but this also is individual. When you read Zechariah chapter 1, there's things that are happening in our individual life that we need to address. And also then from there we address things around the world. Also before I deal with this parallel, remember that the whole COVID-19 issue is only one of the negative issues affecting all of us. Don't focus just on COVID. I dare say, and I don't know whether I have that in my notes later, we can resolve COVID and might think that everything is okay, but COVID is a bit of a cover-up for other things and other issues that are happening in our lives. So we don't want to just focus on one target and get shot from this direction. We have to be vigilant. The Bible talks about um, the seven eyes of the Holy Spirit. It's not like the Holy Spirit actually has seven eyes, but it's talking about that he is very um, um, multidirectional in how he sees. So in other words, what I'm saying, don't focus, well, here's our enemy over here, and we put all of our priority and focus on the enemy in one area, while the enemy can sneak up from another direction. God wants us to have surrounding vision all around and not make COVID the main enemy, but see that there are other enemies that may come to destroy us, undermine us in that way. There are multiple other issues which demand our focus and challenge and demand our priorities. Certain things that are inhibiting and we feel we're inhibited to gather together and worship, and we are, but we're going to overcome that. We're going to move individually and in our homes and our families and intensify our walk with God. Resolving the issue of COVID and its surrounding effects doesn't automatically resolve all of our problems. Um, I met some people really amazing that hardly ever attended church and now they miss the corporate gatherings. And that was really nice, but I wanted to ask this question and I knew that wasn't the right thing to do. Well, when we had church, you came once a month. Thank God you miss it now. But what I'm saying, we have problems without COVID. We have challenges of commitment and faithfulness and loyalty to God and diligence and consistency in God and relationship with God as an individual. We have those challenges. And if COVID gets resolved by a cure, a vaccine is what we're hearing about, that doesn't mean all of our problems are resolved. We don't want to walk into another trap by avoiding one. And so what I'm wanting to do today is to give us perspective. Don't just fight in one direction. Be ready all around. The captivity of Israel was a real problem when Israel was taken captive by Babylon for 70 years. But the captivity, and this is what I want you to hear, the captivity in itself was not the core problem. The captivity was a result of a core problem. So if the captivity got resolved, and at one point it did, God's people still had massive struggles in how they did not serve God effectively. And so when this COVID issue came, 
it's revealing, and I'm going to talk about myself, it's revealing my walk with God. It has shaken loose everything that can be shaken. It has stripped off any religious thing. And now I have to see how well I can stand on my own two feet and walk with God instead of cave in. So the real problem, and I want you to hear it, is not necessarily COVID. The real problem, the core problem, precedes that. And some of these things that we're facing around the world are a result of the people's lack of serving God. They could come out of the captivity physically, but still be subjected to spiritual bondage. And that's where I want to deal with. And I know you might say, hey, that's not really nice. I want a word of encouragement. This is a word of encouragement. A surgeon has to make some cuts to take out that which is going to take our life. He can't say, oh, you know, they're going to bleed. Oh, it's really going to hurt. Sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, it's got to hurt a little bit to take out things that in the long run are going to destroy us. Don't focus as much about going to church, which is wonderful, but start focusing on being the church. We can always be the church. No one can take that away. Look at the countries around the world where going to church openly is not possible. But in those places, the church is being the church. And more people are getting saved in those circles than some of ours. In this particular time, Israel had more of a problem than just the captivity. Uh, again, as Pastor Johnny said, get uh, get a balanced focus. We understand what COVID is. We understand it's dangerous. We understand what it's doing. Uh, we probably don't believe everything because a lot of people are taking advantage and have private agendas. We understand all of that. However, we can't correct that, but what we can correct is our focus. We can correct how we see it and keep God as the main focus. The people, they went into captivity because God's people became slack in their walk with the Lord. That subjected themselves, themselves and, and made them vulnerable to other nations to take them captive. If they serve God effectively, and if their sacrifices on the altar were not compromised, which they were, the Bible says in Malachi, they brought the, they brought the sick and the crippled, and, and that's what they put on the altar, but they ate those other animals that were healthy and strong, they ate them for themselves. But to the tabernacle and to the sacrifice of the temple, they brought sick animals. They brought compromised Offerings. Oh my goodness. Let's listen carefully. Compromised offerings are totally not acceptable by God. In fact, compromised offerings have always brought a curse upon the nation of Israel when they compromise their offerings. What is your offering? What is your time? You know, we can compromise time. Oh, I'll serve God if I have time. I'll pray if I have time. I'll read the Bible if I have time. I challenge you, put God first in your time, in your money, in your efforts, in your mind. Put him first. Give God the best after all. If you sow a compromised seed, you're going to have a compromised harvest. 
and then complain, well, you know, my harvest isn't as good as everybody's. Check the seed. Check the seed. We always strove to find the best seed every spring. We literally, if we didn't think we had the best seed in our possession, we drove a hundred miles and found seed that we could put in the ground because we knew that what you sow, you're going to reap. You can change things in your life without just crying out to God. You can change things in your life by qualifying your seed and what you sow. They became slack in so many areas. And listen carefully. This, and I repeat this, this made them vulnerable to the captivity of the heathen nations around them. Otherwise, they could not have taken them captive because in the proper offerings, the glory of God, the fire of God would appear. Priesthood was compromised. Priesthood became slack. That's the history. And so then when the nations came in and took them captive, it wasn't necessarily God punishing them. It was God correcting them. And keep that in mind. God was correcting, not punishing. Especially in a new covenant, Jesus took all the punishment. So if you're going through something, God's not punishing you. God's adjusting you for greater life. God's adjusting you so that you don't perish. I think that's a good thing to remember. They were taken into captivity into Babylon, and the word Babylon means confusion. How many have noticed how much confusion there is in our society right now? Really, there is. Right from the top down. Uh, everybody's attempting to do something. Nobody knows what to do. Nobody seems to know exactly what is right. We appreciate all these rules. We appreciate every attempt. I want you to know that. But remember, these are humans trying to do their best that don't always know what is best. So criticism is not going to help. Turning to God, seeking the face of God, praying for our leaders rather than criticizing them. Look, We've got lots of people can criticize in our own life and we don't run a nation and we don't run the entire province. I don't want to be bad, but some of us can't even run our own life, can't even run our own homes. And we can sit in the coffee shop and criticize somebody that's making a mess out of the nation. Those facts may be right, but I think prayer would do a whole lot better. There they stayed for 70 years. The temple, uh, Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem was destroyed, which was always called the city of God. And it seems like the enemy, enemy was not only after destroying the city of God, but the enemy was after destroying the temple. Destroying the temple meant that you scatter God's people. All I can say, thank God for the new covenant. Thank God that we have Christ in us. We don't have Christ living in some physical temple in the Holy of Holies that we have to visit. Isn't it marvelous to think that wherever I am, Christ is in me and Christ is with me. That's why I say gathering is an absolute massive necessity and a massive bonus but I'm not going to die spiritually because I'm in Christ and Christ is in me. But in that day, that's where the glory of God was, in the temple, in the Holy of Holies. That's where all the sacrifices were done. And the enemy knew that if he can hit the heart of the spirituality of the people, the temple, the city of Jerusalem, then he can precondition them for captivating them and making them slaves. One main reason for all these attacks on the city of Jerusalem and on Israel and on the temple 
is that it ultimately was ordained to host the coming of the Messiah. This is how God made me understand. Why, why all these wars against Israel? Why was, was Israel like an enemy to everybody? And they wanted to put him down. They wanted to captivate them. They wanted to enslave them. They wanted to make them uh, in lack and poverty. Why? Because you see, the people doing it did not know what they're doing. They didn't. They, the enemy uh, chose agents, which could be nations, governments, systems, people, kings, or whoever, to do this kind of miserable work against God's people. But these agents had no clue or revelation that the temple would be the place where the Messiah would come. Can we apply that today? A lot of rules and regulations that are done, they don't have a clue. They don't have a clue what the church is. They don't have a clue what the church is to be doing in the earth. This is the, this is the worst time to cut out corporate worship. This is the worst time to, to suppress the effective work of the house of God in the community. They don't understand that we do more than physically helping people and feeding people, clothing people. We do way more. We operate in the realm of the spiritual. We hold back, push back the forces of darkness over a city and over a situation. They have no clue about this. So it's no use getting angry. It's just do what we have to do. Wherever you are, just do what you have to do. Intercede and pray. Don't get stuck criticizing that which is perhaps done in genuine, heartfelt ignorance. We have a different level to move on. Let all this happen the way it has to happen. Those are temporary band-aids. But the real cure is Jesus Christ. The real cure is to move back the forces of darkness over our nation and over the world. So the reason the city was attacked, the temple was attacked, because they were scheduled to host the Messiah. The reason Christianity around the world is attacked because we host the Messiah in different forums that have been held to make everybody one in the world, it was clearly stated that Christianity is the only problem to that oneness. Because Christianity is different. So we are the only problem to that oneness. So they can somehow dissolve us and reduce us to just become one world religion which God forbid we never will because we host Jesus the Messiah. We don't host some super spiritual religious person that we bow to. We host a living Messiah. Satan is not interested in doing too much persecution to any other religion, by the way. I wonder why. I wonder why. I'm going to be open and vulnerable. No other religion threatens the kingdom of darkness. But Christianity threatens the kingdom of darkness. Christianity is Satan's nightmare. The church in building is his nightmare. Jesus is the head of the church. That's clear in the Bible. The church is the habitation of God by his Holy Spirit. The church is heaven's office, operating office on earth. What then do you think would threaten the kingdom of darkness to be so wild about what is happening? And I'm, I'm not here to go through the whole list of what's happening in other countries 
the kind of persecution that's happening in other countries, it's against Christianity. So whatever is transpiring from whatever source or level or government, many times these people are ignorant of the kind of things that they are proposing because they don't have a revelation of who God is, who the church is. Right now, if we want total success, every church should have been operating at full bore in worship, in praise, in intercession, in seeking the Lord, in praying for our leadership, but they're stepping on their own toes and don't even know it. At this point in history, the people of God were ultimately corrected after seven years, or 70 years rather, in bondage. They were corrected and they were pruned, but not ruined. I'm, I'm going to be stopping at a couple statements here, then I'll move on from what happened in the book of Zechariah after God's people were corrected. We don't mind being pruned. We don't want to be ruined. First time I came to British Columbia before my father-in-law taught me how to prune trees, I pruned an apricot tree. And I mean, I pruned it. The poor thing took about three years to revive. I almost ruined it. And when it finally revived, it was just like the apricot tree looked like an Afro hairdo. It had hundreds of little twigs growing. I didn't do a good job. So we want to be pruned, but we don't want to be ruined. God has pruned the church for better quality fruit, for greater fruit, and for reachable fruit. I could go on that alone. We have been rebooted, but refuse to be looted. I love rhyming stuff. It just helped me remember stuff. We have been adjusted, but refuse to be busted. Israel repented, and God was satisfied with their repentance. So this is where I'm going to stop. We'll continue from here. I want to do a prayer for all of you out there, not just because it's a religious thing to do, but a prayer of impartation. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every listener and beyond all that is said and done, Holy Spirit, enter into their heart, spirits, mind, soul, the room, wherever they're listening and give them hope and give them peace. And those that don't know Jesus Christ, that simply they would say, Lord, I submit to your Lordship. I submit to your salvation I accept you today in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Pastor Johnny. Amen. Thank you for that word, Pastor Andrew. Listen, if you need prayer, uh, our prayer, we have online prayer hosts right now ready to pray with you. And so uh, please reach out to us if you need prayer prayer if there's a way that we can partner with you in this season so we love you we love being your pastors and stay tuned for some great announcements coming up in these next few days anyways god bless you and we'll see you again soon